Two days ago, I seen a Blu-ray you could watch on that TV back there. You want to watch a movie? Talk to me. Hey there guys, how are you? So I'm downstairs in the foot cave right now. We're going to talk about the Mad Max trilogy on Blu-ray. We're going to talk about each movie, the picture quality, and the special features. So let's get into it. Now check this thing out. This trilogy comes in this steel case right here. That way if there ever is an apocalypse one day, you can actually save this. It's bulletproof. And you know, if you want to put some fuel in there, you open it up, close it back up, and you get some fuel. Okay, let's open this thing up. So you pop it open here. Uh, here's the Blu-ray case right here. Uh, it comes with all three movies, Mad Max, The Road Warrior, my personal favorite, and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Now, one of the coolest things about this is Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome has never been on Blu-ray. For some odd reason, it, it never hit Blu-ray, but finally, you can buy all three movies in one set, and you can finally meet Master Blaster. Who run butter town? Master Blaster! To run butter town. If you guys haven't seen the movie, just stick with me. Because I've had all the available Mad Max movies on Blu-ray for a while now, and it's kind of nice to have them all in one little case. Okay, let's talk about the first Mad Max movie. Now, this was a very low-budget movie. It was made in the late 1970s. The movie had a really raw and aggressive style about it, and this is a pre-apocalyptic movie. The apocalypse was on the verge of happening, but it just didn't quite happen yet in this movie. Now, I've always enjoyed the first Mad Max movie. It was different, it was innovative, but let's talk about my personal favorite, The Road Warrior. We do it my way. Fear is our ally, the gasoline will be ours, and then you shall have your revenge. That's another Lord Humongous quote. By the way, Lord Humongous was kind of like the original version of Bane in the Dark Knight Rises trilogy. Really think about it. Humongous, the voice, the imposing threat, but he's also kind of sophisticated, even though he looks like a greased up meathead. Now, The Road Warrior is one of my favorite movies of all time. I remember watching it for the first time when I was a little kid on beta tape. My dad recorded it. I watched it. And I was like, this movie is awesome. Now, one of the scenes that always stuck with me from this movie is you have the guy who has a mohawk, and then riding behind him on his motorcycle is his little blonde bitch boy with bleach blonde hair who has assless chaps on and a chain wrapped around his neck that always scared me for some odd reason it still scares me you know just talking about this movie it makes me want to watch it right now because this thing has so many things working for it that really give me what i need you know it has a heroic guy and it has speed it has badass cars it's a post-apocalyptic movie it has a big buff guy in it named humongous with a jason Voorhees mask on the way that this movie's filmed is really intense you know when there's action scenes and cars flipping around you really just feel like someone probably died doing that stunt that's how intense it it feels. Two men enter, one man leaves. Are you guys ready to enter Thunderdome? By the way, that's what's going on back there. I just got done watching it, actually. So Thunderdome stars Mel Gibson, Tina Turner. Now, here's my backstory on the movie Thunderdome. Ever since I was a little kid, I always thought that the ending of Thunderdome was when they got done fighting in the Thunderdome. You know, Mel Gibson's character, and then you had Master Blaster fighting on bungee cords trying to stab each other. I always thought that was the climax and the ending to the entire movie. And then years later, I go to watch the movie again, and I'm like, wow, that'll happen within the first 45 minutes. We still have an hour and 20 minutes left to go in this movie. And I think that says something about the movie because in my opinion, this movie kind of blows its load within 45 minutes because the first 45 minutes of this movie is a really good sequel to Road Warrior. You know, you pick up, uh, you know, this town's very interesting that he goes to, and then you have that big epic action battle scene in Thunderdome. And at the end of Thunderdome, they try to recreate the same thing that they did in Road Warrior. And instead of using a semi for the big action scene, you use a train. Okay, let's talk about the picture quality on special features. Uh, first of all, the picture quality in all these movies looks okay. It's nothing mind-blowing. Keep in mind, these are all very grainy, raw-looking movies, and I think it's okay. There's a little bit of room for improvement, but overall, I don't really have any major complaints. And as far as special features go, on the first two movies, you have some commentary by director George Miller. By the way, that guy went on to make Happy Feet. Like, how do you go from Ro Road Warrior to Happy Feet? Like, how, the, how does that even happen? And then on the movie Thunderdome, there's no special features at all, which is kind of a letdown. So, if you guys like this Blu-ray review and my bad Clint Eastwood impression, anyway, what I'm talking about is the Clint Eastwood uh, 20 film collection. So anyway, guys, click the link up here. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy.